back in the late 90s and early 2000s, music labels were desperate to replicate the success of Britney Spears. A whole crop of pop stars, from Jessica Simpson to Mandy Moore, sprung up after the runaway success of Britney's first album. This teen pop explosion was one of the defining trends of the time, and with so many new artists popping up, it's only natural that some would be forgotten. Willa Ford, unfortunately, fits in this category. Outside of diehard pop fans, her music career remains largely underappreciated. Willa, whose real name is Amanda Lee Williford, began her musical career on the soundtrack for the first Pokemon movie, which is an absolute grab bag of artists from this era, with songs from Christina Aguilera, NSYNC, 98 Degrees, and Bewitched. Can we get Nintendo to include this whole soundtrack in Smash Brothers? I want to listen to Soda Pop while beating the hell out of Charizard. Willa's song, called Lullaby, sees her singing from Jigglypuff's point of view. It's a cute novelty song, but not really indicative of the type of music she'd make. It definitely leans more heavy on the bubblegum side of teen pop, which makes sense since it was on a soundtrack for a kid's movie. It is pretty catchy though. I love the bubbly sound effects and dramatic strings, though I do think the production drowns out her voice a little bit. The song was released under her first stage name, Manda, though she'd end up changing it to Willa Ford to avoid confusion with Mandy Moore. She went on to open for some of the Backstreet Boys' shows in 2000, where she apparently received tons of hate from fans since she was dating Nick Carter at the time. This hatred led to her struggling with depression, but working on her music helped her overcome this time. Her debut single, I Wanna Be Bad, dropped in April 2001, and it was immediately clear that Willow was not that innocent. The song was written as a response to her label, MCA, who wanted her to make more wholesome music, which she had no interest in doing. Luckily, the song was heard by top executives at Lava Records and Atlantic Records, which led to her being signed to both labels. In my opinion, I Wanna Be Bad holds up extremely well, it definitely has all the hallmarks of early 2000s pop, but its rebellious spirit and Willa's animated performance make it a complete party anthem. The lyrics might seem a little tryhard, but I genuinely believe them coming from her. She's having the time of her life singing this, especially in the video, which sees her dancing at a club, stealing police cruisers, seductively eating donuts, just your typical Friday night things. I love this video. She is giving you queen of pop, and her outfits are so sexy. Willow was definitely aiming for a more mature image than her contemporaries, and this approach made for a pretty memorable debut single. It peaked at number 22 on the US Billboard Hot 100, so it was a moderate hit. It was even used in a Six Flags commercial, which she starred in. She was really coming for that dancing bald man's bag right there. Her debut album, Willow Was Here, dropped in July 2001, and it is early 2000s pop excellence. A mixture of dance pop and R&B tracks, this record is filled with some of the stickiest hooks and most unexpectedly humorous songwriting from this time. Willa's over-the-top personality comes through on every track, making it an extremely fun listen. Prince Charming is an especially campy track, with lyrics that see her fantasizing about her dream man. As silly as the lyrics are, she plays it completely straight. I love the line, heart made of gold, body like a rock, likes to serenade, maybe even smart. She's got her priorities in line. First, they gotta be cute, and if they happen to have a brain too, that's just a cherry on top. The bridge is the best part, with her name dropping celebrities who fit her definition of a perfect man. She sounds so extra during this part, it's hilarious. If anyone listens to The Saturdays, it reminds me of the bridge for their song Gentleman, which is a bop. The song Tender is definitely the slowest one on the album, being a sweet love ballad about her pursuing a relationship while making sure her love interest doesn't take advantage of her heart. It is undoubtedly the corniest song, but I can't help but love it. Something about these sickeningly sweet early 2000s pop ballads just hit for me. They remind me of the fall for some reason, and that is my favorite season, so I have a soft spot for tracks like this. The song Jokes On You is another highlight, showcasing Willa's effortlessly cool personality as she cuts a toxic man out of her life. It was produced by 8-Bit, who previously produced songs for Destiny's Child, like No No No, Bootylicious, and Apple Pie Ella Mode, one of their most underrated songs. Jokes On You sounds like it could have been sung by Destiny's Child, as it fits in with their pop R&B sound, and it's a complete bop. My personal favorite song from the album, though, is Tired, which is a criticism of the music industry. It's one of the most perplexing songs I've ever heard. She's simultaneously criticizing popular artists, even name-dropping Britney multiple times, 
on a track that sounds like it could have been sung by any one of those artists. I appreciate the message of her saying she's tired of people wanting her to be something she's not, but it will never not be funny to me that she essentially made a Britney Spears song about how she doesn't want to make Britney Spears songs. Tired is a complete bop, and definitely one you could sing to feel like you're that bitch, but I still genuinely can't tell if it's self-aware or delusional. Will has been vocal about her time in the music industry, saying it didn't feel authentic despite her writing most of her songs, and maybe that's why Tired, and the rest of the album, does sound extremely of its time. If she wanted to be successful, she had to play the game and make songs that appealed to a wide audience. You can still feel Will's passion and personality throughout, but the production doesn't do much to differentiate itself from other major acts. This is a quintessential early 2000s teen pop record, with a little bit more edginess. While it's nothing groundbreaking, it's absolutely worth listening to if you love this era of music. It's a personal favorite of mine. I rank it up there with Jessica Simpson's Irresistible and Mandy Moore's early works as my favorite Britney Spears albums that aren't actually Britney Spears. Unfortunately, Willow Was Here didn't end up being the huge smash it was meant to be. It peaked at number 56 on the Billboard Hot 200, and the second single, Did You Understand That, didn't chart at all. Willa caused some controversy back in 2017 when she said the underperformance of that song was due to it being released on September 11th. In all fairness, I don't think she said this as a way to get pity for herself. She simply said the world stood still that day, and a lot of the projects that were released on or around it naturally didn't do well. She wasn't blaming the tragedy as the reason her music career didn't take off. She just said it was a factor in why things didn't work out. The song Ooh Ooh was also released as a promotional single, though it didn't make much noise either. It's a shame because both those songs are great. Ooh Ooh is an especially sexy, laid-back R&B track that's one of my favorites from her. After doing a hilariously horny Christmas song for the TRL Christmas album, Willow worked on and basically completed a second project titled Sexy Sex Obsessive, but it never got officially released. The title track was released through her website, and the song F the Men, A Toast to Men, was pushed as a single, with a video and everything. I already talked about the song in a previous video, but I seriously can't give it enough praise. A Toast to Men is a banger. It's such a great going out song that I wish more people knew about. It was apparently used in some TV commercials, but I couldn't find any of them when I looked it up. It'd be pretty shocking if it was, because it's a damn explicit song. I respect how she had such a bold single like this in 2003. I feel like people were more easily scandalized back then, and having a song with the F word right in the title must have been pretty shocking. It was probably a little too shocking though, as it didn't end up making a huge splash. The same goes for one of the other tracks, Who I Am, which was secretly released in Europe. What does that mean? I have no idea, but that song is actually really great. It's a touching dance track about being gay and coming out to your parents. She wrote it for her friend, who was struggling with their sexuality at the time. Willa serves some of her best vocals on it. Her voice really suits a heavy dance track like this. The song, despite its secret release, didn't make that much noise either. The string of underperforming singles, along with the massive changes happening at her label, led to Willa stepping away from the music industry altogether. Many tracks for her second planned album have leaked over the years, including a sexed up cover of the Oompa Loompa song from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. That was certainly a creative decision. Not a particularly good one, but creative for sure. I'll put a link for the unreleased tracks in the description if you want to check them out. They're basically like the songs from her first album, just hornier. Willow went on to star in TV shows and movies, such as the Anne and Nicole Smith story and the 2009 Friday the 13th remake. She eventually turned all her focus to her interior design career, and even starred in the home renovation show Flip It Like Disick in 2019. Nowadays, she seems to be at peace with how her music career panned out, saying that the universe sent her in a different direction that led to joy in other areas of her life. She's also stated that she's always liked the other pop girls, including Britney, but that she didn't want to have their squeaky clean image. The thing is, being a slightly more provocative pop star in 2001 wasn't necessarily that shocking anymore. Britney had already been pushing boundaries with her live performances, and her video for I'm a Slave For You, along with Christina Aguilera's Dirty, would set the tone for the more mature soundscape the music industry would take on. Even though both of those singles dropped after Willow was here, they retroactively made that album feel outdated. Willow Was Here isn't that much more sexual or explicit than other records of the time, and with pop music aging out of this bubblegum era, 
An artist like Willa Ford just wasn't attention grabbing enough. I don't mean this to be shady, but I don't think Willa had the immediate it factor that the other girls had. Christina and Jessica had the voice, Britney was the amazing dancer, and Mandy was like the little sister who made music for a younger demographic. Willa had what it takes to be a pop star, but she didn't have enough to differentiate herself from the sea of other pop stars. She was also a victim to bad timing. If Willow Was Here dropped even just a year earlier and went up against albums like Sweet Kisses and Christina Aguilera, she may have gotten more eyes on her for being the comparatively raunchier pop star. However, by 2001, albums like this were steadily losing interest and audiences wanted something with a more mature sound. Willow got in the game a little too late with an album that would become quickly outdated and that unfortunately made her music career fizzle out before it really started. She seems happy now, but I selfishly wish we would have gotten more music from her. Maybe she could appear as a vocalist on dance tracks or make some club appearances as a way to dip her toe into the industry without becoming completely immersed in it. I don't know if she'd even want to do that, but I would definitely support it. Willa Ford may not be well known today, but for lovers of 2000s pop music, her brief discography is a gem. Give it a listen if you want to be bad.